Hi, my name is John Madsen, and I'm the Director of Athletics at Nasa Regional High School. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 Fall Sports Preseason Meeting. You know, we find ourselves in very challenging times, but I'm excited for the opportunities that lie ahead for our student athletes. After several months of meetings, with things constantly changing every day, we finally have a plan in place to hold the fall sports season here at Nauset. Our goal is to provide a great experience for our student athletes with the health and safety of all remaining as our top priority. I thank you for your patience, flexibility, and support as we continue to navigate our way through this process. Our head coaches are busy preparing for the upcoming season, and I'm sure our student athletes are very eager to get started. And we will cover many important topics here tonight, many of which are new due to COVID-19. At the end of tonight's meeting, please do not hesitate to reach out with any questions you may have. As I stated, we have many important topics to cover here tonight. We will discuss the new layout of the athletic seasons for the coming school year. We will get some updates and information from the Nauset Warriors Booster Club. We will discuss several athletic department policies, many of which are new. We will talk about the chain of command and roles within the athletic department. We'll highlight our athletic website, and we will get updated information from our athletic trainer, including new safety protocols and procedures. As you may already know, the fall season was not only delayed from late August to mid-September, but it was also split into two seasons. The state created a fourth wedge season called Fall 2 for the sports that are not approved to compete this fall. The fall sports that were approved will compete during the traditional fall season, which we are now calling Fall 1. The Fall 1 season starts on Monday, September 21st, and will finish no later than Friday, November 20th. During the Fall 1 season, we will run Boys Varsity and JV Golf, Boys Varsity and JV Soccer, Girls Varsity and JV Soccer, Varsity and JV Field Hockey, and Boys and Girls Cross Country. Football will run practice sessions three days a week for four weeks, starting on September 28th. The Fall 2 season starts on Monday, February 22nd, and will finish no later than Sunday, April 25th. Football, cheerleading, and volleyball will compete during this Fall 2 season. The hope is that the restrictions will be lessened by this time so that these sports can compete. We will have a winter season from Monday, November 30th to Sunday, February 21st. Our winter sports include girls and boys basketball, girls and boys ice hockey, girls and boys indoor track, girls and boys swimming and diving, wrestling, and basketball cheerleading. Our spring season will run from Monday, April 26th to Saturday, July 3rd. Our spring sports include girls and boys lacrosse, girls and boys tennis, girls and boys track and field, baseball, softball, unified track and field, sailing, and girls golf. Overall, this gives us a total of four seasons this school year. Student athletes are allowed to compete in all four seasons if they desire. I'll certainly keep everyone posted if things change as we progress through this coming school year. Now that we understand the layout of the four athletic seasons for this coming school year and which sports will run during the fall one season, our fall one head coaches will introduce themselves to you now. Hi, I'm Brian Hicks. I'm the head boys varsity golf coach at Nauset Regional High School. My name is Cheryl Poor and I coach field hockey at Nauset High School. Hi, my name is Tom Pollard and I am the head girls soccer coach at Nauset Regional High School. My name's John McCulley. I'm the head boys soccer coach at Nauset Regional High School. Hi, my name is Bruce Strunk and I am the head varsity football coach here at Nauset Regional. Hi, my name is Moira Nobley and I am the head coach of the boys and girls cross country team at Nauset Regional High School. Our head coaches put a great deal of time and effort in each of their teams and we would not have the athletic program that we have without all of their hard work and dedication. I'd like to thank all of our head coaches for everything that you do, especially this season, which presents a variety of challenges for everyone. In order for us to overcome these challenges and have a successful season, we all need to be doing our part. I'd like to take a minute and discuss the procedures that our student athletes need to follow once we get started next Monday. This includes what they should do prior to coming to campus, what they do while they're on campus, and what they do when it's time to leave campus. Prior to coming to campus, student athletes are required to submit a daily self health screen. Each morning, student athletes will receive a Google form sent directly to their school email at 9 a.m. This form must be completed each day in order to participate in athletics. 
If a student athlete is showing any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, they should report this to Michelle Pablu, our athletic trainer, and stay home that day. In addition, prior to coming to campus, student athletes should be dressed and prepared for their practice or competition. They should bring their own athletic bag and we recommend that they pack multiple face masks, multiple water bottles, hand sanitizer, and any equipment they may need. These items should never be shared with anyone else. Please make sure you know which field your team is using so you know where to go once you arrive on campus. Upon arrival, student athletes should be wearing a face mask and go directly to their team's location. Coaches will take team attendance daily, which will be tracked and submitted electronically. If a student athlete arrives and has not completed their daily health screen, they will not be allowed to participate. Each team will have a medical kit, hand sanitizer, and disinfectant for all shared equipment. Please note that our buildings are closed, so there will be no access to our locker rooms or indoor facilities. However, we will have portable toilets and hand washing stations on our fields. It is expected that student athletes utilize these facilities, wash their hands, wear their face masks, and maintain social distancing at all times. Once your team has finished activities for the day, you should remain with your team until your transportation arrives. Students who drive themselves should leave campus immediately. It is important that student athletes continue to wear face masks and maintain social distancing while they wait for their transportation to arrive. Teams should not be mixing with each other as we are trying to keep teams apart and spaced out. Coaches will be supervising until all of their student athletes have left campus for the day. During the fall one season, we have decided to allow spectators at our home events only. In other words, Nosset parents and fans can attend events hosted here at Nosset Regional High School only. We are limited with the number of spectators that we are allowed to have at each event, so this will help manage that effort. All spectators must wear a mask and maintain social distancing of at least six feet apart from others. We will not allow spectators on campus during practice sessions. We appreciate your understanding with these policies as we must do everything we can to keep everyone safe in our facility. At this time, I'd like to switch gears and introduce the president of the Nosset Warriors Booster Club, Jen Hamer. Hello athletes, welcome to fall sports season one for this year. I wish you all a great season. Do your best, have fun with it. Um, and just, we're all dealing as best as we can. John Matson's done an incredible job of pulling this off for everybody. And we wish you a lot of fun and success and just run with it as best as you can. I wanna to talk to you for a few seconds about the boosters. Um, knowing this is virtual, you can all mute me. I hope you don't. This is an important organization that's a big part of the school. Um, and we really need your help this year, both in bodies. We need some people to join us, obviously, with everything going on in the world. All meetings are virtual. It's the first Monday of every month. Um, and the link is a Zoom link that is always on our website, nossetboosters.com. We would love some new members. We need some new board people. Um, a lot of us are running on extra time. We were supposed to do our position for two years. We're running at two and a half just because of the COVID. And we would love to see some new faces um, and have some more opinions and some help. Um, on top of that, we also need your help with fundraising. We obviously were not able to have our evening for champions or boost the black and gold event this spring because of COVID. So really our only fundraising this year will be the Nosset cards. And we're excited. They've just come off of the printer and will be distributed um, this week. Obviously, we will not be having the Blitz weekends or anything in the normal time, so to speak. So we will be selling them at all of um, at a variety of different sponsor sites. So I know the first ones to sign up, as always, is Ken Tabor in East Ham and Orleans will have NOSIC cards. And we will be updating on our website where else you can buy them. You also can buy them on our website at NossetBoosters.com. There's the $20 Nosset card available, and then there's also Nosset Boosters memberships. Um, really, there's a gold and a regular membership, and you have to have a Nosset Boosters men membership if you have a senior and you would like them to be able to have um, participate in the scholarship at the end of the year for the Bohannon Scholarship. So you do have to become a member to, for your senior to be eligible for the scholarship. Um, but you can go to the website and purchase either the Nosset card or a membership that comes with the Nosset cards. And there's some amazing sponsors. We've got 
Ben and Jerry's, Joey's Food Truck, Good Eats, Ferretti's, Guapo's, Hole in One, um, Prestige Dry Cleaning, Stone Lovin', Local Break, Sam's Deli, Lorino's, Orleans Bowling Center, Whisk, um, Snow's, Butler Sporting Goods. So there's some really great sponsors with lots of fun discounts. So make sure you check it out. If you go to the NossetBoosters.com website, you will be able to see the card that's got all the discounts listed on it. Um, so well, that's what I wanted to tell you about. Check out the website. Join our Zoom meetings if you can. We would love to have some new bodies, some new opinions, um, obviously some new ideas as we all kind of pivot with the COVID world we have going on. We know sports will need some extra things this year that the school may not have room for in the budget. Um, as always, we want to provide as much as we can. So please join us with your creativity. Um, and definitely also check us out on social media. We've got a Facebook and Instagram page. So we look forward to hearing from you, hearing about your season, and um, I'll talk to you for the next meeting. Good luck, all. Thank you, Jen, and thank you to all the members and supporters of the Nosset Warriors Booster Club. I encourage everyone watching here tonight to reach out, to get involved. We're always looking for volunteers for various projects throughout the school year. And this is an excellent group to get involved with. They do so much behind the scenes for our student athletes. For example, last week, they agreed to fund face masks for all of our fall one athletes, uh, which should arrive before our first set of games later this month. So uh, I just wanna say thank you to the boosters who are a huge part of our athletics program. Um, and in a moment here, we'll learn more about other members of our athletic program, but certainly the boosters are one of the most critical parts um, for our student athletes and for our athletics program. There are several members of an athletics program and it is important that everyone fully understands their roles. The members I would like to discuss today are athletes who are the primary focus of the program, coaches who implement the program, officials who administer the contests, and parents who are the supporters of the program. Issues can occur when one member tries to assume the role of another member. Student athletes are the most important part of the program. They are expected to demonstrate good sportsmanship, both on and off the field, and maintain a positive attitude while building relationships with their teammates. It is critical that athletes understand that academics always come first and athletics are a privilege that must be earned. If issues arise during a season, athletes should communicate with their coaches and teachers so the problem can be resolved. Our goal is to give our student athletes a great experience here at Nosset and their role is a huge part of that. Our coaches are a vital part of the athletic program. They too are expected to show good sportsmanship, leadership, and character. They will give constructive feedback to players each day and challenge them to get better. Coaches will establish roles for each player and create a positive environment that promotes open communication, which ultimately will lead to the team's success. Our parents are also a very important part of the athletic program. Our parents are expected to show support for all of our student athletes and teams. They should always treat our officials with respect as they will make mistakes, just like our coaches and student athletes. If issues do arise, it is important to communicate those issues with the appropriate people in a timely fashion. Overall, we want our parents to enjoy the games and cheer on their sons or daughters and their teams each year. Now that we have reviewed the roles of our athletic department members, I'd like to review the chain of command that we expect everyone to follow. If there is an issue, we want our student athletes to advocate for themselves and meet with their coach. If that does not resolve the issue, then the student athlete, coach, and parent should set up a time to meet. If the issue still remains unresolved, the athletic director would then get involved, and as a last resort, the principal. As long as we all follow this chain of command and communicate early and often, most issues will be resolved very quickly. Over the course of any season, there are certain issues that are not appropriate to discuss with the coaches. These include playing time, team strategy, play calling, or other student athletes. If your son or daughter is not sure why they aren't getting more playing time, they should talk to their coach and ask what they need to do to improve. If other issues arise, it is important that our student athletes and parents follow the chain of command that we just discussed in order to solve the issue. Our coaches have a very difficult job and they have to make several difficult decisions. I ask that everyone respect those decisions and encourage their sons and daughters to advocate for themselves. 
We now turn our attention to some important athletic policies and procedures, including athlete attendance and transportation. As I stated earlier, athletics are a privilege and academics always come first. In order to participate each day in athletics, you must attend all of your classes during the school day. Exceptions include scheduled appointments, which must be approved in advance by the director of athletics. On occasion, student athletes will get dismissed early from school for away games, so it is important that they attend all of their classes each day. Student athletes are expected to attend all of their practices and games. If they are unable to attend due to a sickness or illness, they should notify their coach to let them know. Daily team attendance will be tracked and submitted each day by our coaches. Transportation is provided to and from all of our away contests. Student athletes are expected to use this transportation unless they clear in advance with the director of athletics and coach. Due to our remote learning model, we are working on a plan to get student athletes up to school each afternoon for practice. We anticipate having several stops in various towns that will pick students up and bring them to the high school. We will communicate the specifics of this plan once it is finalized with the bus company. Student athletes will be directed where to sit on the bus and are expected to wear their masks at all times. Transportation after practice and home games is the responsibility of the student athlete and family. At this time, I would like to highlight two important MIAA rules that we must abide by, the Bonafide Team Rule and the Chemical Health Rule. The Bonafide Team Rule states that as a member of a high school team here at Nauset, you cannot miss a practice or team event to compete on an out-of-school team. Your high school team always comes first and is the priority. The Chemical Health Rule states that a student shall not, regardless of the quantity, use, consume, possess, buy, sell, or give away any beverage containing alcohol, any tobacco product, marijuana, steroids, or any controlled substance. If a student athlete violates either of these MIAA rules, they will get suspended for 25% of their season. If you look at this chart, the length of the suspension depends on the number of events that your team has during the season. It is important that we understand these rules and consequences so we always make good decisions. One final school rule I'd like to touch on is called the vacation rule which states that athletes who miss consecutive practices or games due to vacations or family trips will be ineligible for participation in athletics until they make up the number of games missed and half of the practices missed during their absence. For example, if you were to go away on vacation and miss two games and two practices while you were gone, when you got back, you'd have to sit out an additional two games and practice at least once before you'd be eligible to compete once again. Exceptions to this rule can only be approved by the Director of Athletics prior to the anticipated absence. I encourage all of you to check out our athletic website, www.nossetsports.org. It's our one-stop shop for all of the necessary information, including game schedules, scores, news updates, and announcements. If you're on Twitter, I encourage you to follow us, at Nosset Sports, for up-to-date schedules, scores, game postponements, and other important information. We are very fortunate to have Michelle Pavlou, our athletic trainer, on staff here at Nasset Regional High School. She does a tremendous job with all of our student athletes and treats them as if they are her own. Michelle can be reached by email or phone to answer any questions regarding athlete registration, physicals, impact testing, or anything to do with athletic training protocols and procedures. Please note the following information regarding concussion protocols, return to athletics, and opioid education and prevention. Once again, if you have any specific questions regarding any of these items, please contact Michelle directly at pavlum at nossetschools.org. This fall season will certainly look a lot different than it has in the past, but our staff is working hard to provide a fun, safe, and memorable experience for our student athletes. I ask that you continue to be patient as we finalize plans surrounding transportation, game schedules, practice schedules, etc. If you have any questions, please email me directly at matsonj at nossetschools.org. I will also be putting together a frequently asked questions document and posting on our website, www.nossetsports.org, for you to reference as well. 
I can't wait to see our student athletes back on campus next week. Thank you for your attention and have a great night.